You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaprota film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Welcome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Welcome to the Never Daily Podcast, where we bring you extra... On this episode, yep. we're going to be bringing you some extra interesting stuff. Also, today's wardrobe for the operators brought to you by Southwest Airlines and Sarah Seeger. The Denali snap-up pullover is built with mid-weight mountain fleece that is anti-pill and anti-static. Not only will it age well, it's built to forego the usual static shock tendency of fleece. This essential fleece is necessary in cold season. Add it to your arsenal today. Combined with a colorful Southwest logo, intricately embroidered with precision, finish this piece off. The oper we operator wears this pullover well, ready to go out on the town, ready to hit the root beer dispensary in style. <clears throat> That's the, that is a fleece that you could wear at a church potluck. <laughs> As well as the church potluck. <laughs> and then the church get together at the bowling alley. <laughs> Where there's another potluck. Or there's another potluck, yes. Oh, man. Um, it, it, my uh, my mom, I, I, can't, I think my mom must have mentioned funeral potatoes, which is a, uh, a Mormon staple. It's like a casserole. Uh, somewhere in Chase's... Giving the Italian, Mwah. yes, they're delicious. Um, I thought funeral potatoes was a term for a um, person that was in a vegetative state that is now dead. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, if you don't have a cadaver farm and you haven't named it funeral potatoes, what are we even doing? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yes, yeah, so apparently a ton of people have reached out to my the momperator for her funeral potatoes uh, recipe. Oh, it's a thing. It's a thing. She so these are hold on. Let's. <laughs> Your mother has a separate recipe f for funeral potatoes. Yeah. Than all the other, and you only get the good taters. If somebody has somebody has to fucking die for your mom to break out the good taters, well, I, well, I don't know. All I know is that she's had a recipe for funeral potatoes for a very long time because I grew up eating them. Um, in the Mormon household, it's uh, you'll you could have a casserole and there not be a funeral. Yeah, but then you also know that should you end up at a funeral. At an LDS church gymnasium. Yeah. Is that one it's, kid that's carrying all the chairs to impress the ladies? Exactly. There's always that kid. I was that kid. You know, though, it is it is interesting. I will say uh, Mormons are really good about they go. There's, a, there's an added gene, I think, that we have when it comes to events where when the event is done, everyone, like a robot, stands up, folds their own chair, and takes it over and stacks it on the wall. And then, like robots, there's seven men who just suddenly turn into table folders, and they fold all the roll the round rental tables, and, and they they wheel them down the gymnasium, and they put them in the te the table holder, and put it away in the closet next to the volleyball poles that that the gymnasium is built to have. You yeah. could pull those out and put them in the ground. And yeah, so, you know, it's just like an extra. You guys extra... are so what though? You call it golly ball? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a sex term in, in, in Mormon circles. Does your mom have a separate recipe for wedding potatoes? No, you don't have wedding potatoes. I'm trying to think if there's a Mormon thing for weddings. I was at my buddy Decker's wedding here a few months ago, and they had some 
just fucking phenomenal potatoes there. They were very spicy. They had a lot of herbs and stuff in them. Mm. I was really enjoying them. And uh, but the first bite I took in the middle of this wedding thing was like caught me off guard because I was expecting, you know, white people potatoes and they Mm -hmm. really weren't. And I said loudly because I was drunk. Wow. And then. For whatever reason, there was a lull in the conversation. I got really quiet, but I was drunk, so I wasn't able to pick up on that. So I said, wow. They really African American to these potatoes up. Wow. <laughs> wow. And it just kind of you could have heard a pin drop. Wow. And oh, then I went back to eating my potatoes. They were delicious though. It was a compliment on the potatoes, but it sounded super racist. Yeah. Which are the best kind of compliments I find. Yeah. Speaking of racist, um the three of us have now completed completed the trifecta of spooky Halloween stories with Matt Cox from Inside True Crime. He interviewed each one of us on separate episodes and each of us told him, recounted a spooky story. And get, you know, here 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 was his takeaway from it. We fin I finished mine the other day and he said, you know, you know what's weird is I asked a bunch of people to just come on and, and tell me a spooky story and none of the stories were spooky. They were all like gory and i was like yeah because there's one spooky story in the world of true crime and that's the hook hand on the door that's it that's it there aren't any other spooky tales it's it's miss a misnomer matt and he was like you know what i think you're right why don't why don't i join 1159 and i was like matt let's just slow our roll let's give it some time see what's going on anyway i don't know i tell the story of junko ferudo and i think that's a very spooky story it's definitely gory. Mine was gory too. Chase, was yours gory? Was your was the story that you told? Mine had Satan worship and devil worship and people dancing on graves and zombies and I don't know how mine wasn't spooky. It was pretty spooky. It sounds spooky. It it's yeah. it might be like it yours might also be like politicians spooky like all that stuff that politicians do so maybe yours is yours is also allegory <laughs> yes because <laughs> it sounds like Al Gore. anyway um this won't be the case whenever you're listening to this show but tomorrow's halloween around these parts 2020 is, isn't it thank god and i put so much work into the children the kiddos costumes this year you did what are your kids this year? Uh, well, both of my girls are on a big Stranger Things kick. Hmm. My eight-year-old is obsessed with Eddie Munson, who is like the kind of nerdy rock metalhead in season four that everybody loved. And she's obsessed with him to the point where she asked us, like, how old is he? <laughs> And we had to tell her, and then she's like, and I'm this age. And like, so when I'm this age, like what she was trying to do is figure out, is there a universe where we will be in her head? She's the only one getting older. Yeah. She's like, well, I'll be able to marry him when I'm uh, 20, but maybe he'll be in his fifties when she's like, oh yeah, he gets older too. It's like, yeah, but there's not a universe where you and Eddie Munson get together. I'm sorry. It's like a Leo DiCaprio in universe, maybe. If he maintains his fame, she could look him up when she's 20, probably. Yeah. But she's going as Eddie Munson from Stranger Things. And we took her, we ordered a very nice wig that looks just like Eddie's hair. And then we had her wear it. We went to a beauty salon and had us uh, a, a hairdresser cut it and fix it to Eddie Munson's hair. And then we dyed it. Uh, I've been meticulously putting together her little battle vest, her little Eddie Munson battle vest that is super screen accurate <laughs> to the one you same patches in the same locations, same pins in the same locations. Um, her Eddie Munson costume is going to be fucking on point. And then our four year old wanted to be 11 from Stranger Things, which is the little girl with the telekinesis powers. Oh, it's going to be, you got to video that. I got to see her do the telekinesis powers because you know she's going to be doing it all night long. She'll be like, Daddy, close the door. And she'll stand like six foot away and she'll hold her little hand up. 
<laughs> pretend like she's closing the t- <laughs> She's like, a picture now, I've got a bloody nose. Go, okay, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so she wanted to be 11 and then uh, our Sam this will probably be his last year trick or treating um, he wanted to be a Freddy Krueger again like Freddy Krueger take two because I did him once this Freddy Krueger when he was probably like six Um, and we're going to do a take two this time to where he can much better handle the latex and stuff on his face because it's a little bit of a pain in the ass uh, having to get all that stuff off and and putting the appliances on and everything so, yeah, that's a, you've got a makeup, you got wardrobe and makeup before they go out. Yeah, for the night. That's cool. Um, Mona it, Nora is a uh, spider witch, which is sort of an amalgamation of Amazon purchases. And then Mo- Nor- Mona, we went to a trunk or treat the other night, and <clears throat> kids kept coming up and going, "You're Pennywise," and she's like, "Why do people keep calling me Pennywise?" Cause she's, she's sort of like if, if, uh, if, um, Pennywise and, oh no, the girl with the red and blue hair, baseball bat. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Ah. They had a baby. Cause she's, cause Mona's costume is like a Pennywise clown costume, but her head and everything is sort of a, she's an evil clown. Oh, I, I've got it. I've got a picture of her. Um, that's great for podcasting a picture of my daughter's costume. Um, but you'll, but you'll see, you'll see that, um, that she's kind of both. Okay. I can see. Well, she's got the Pennywise makeup. Yeah. Yeah. The Pennywise makeup and a little bit of a clownish kind of thing. Also, by the way, that picture's AI. I took it of her when we were standing in line to wait, get pizza. And then I had AI uh, put her in a a circus. So that's, that's a thing. That's pretty crazy, but who cares? Um, and then 11 minutes. Yeah. 11 minutes. And then I was talking about, uh, Sam is Ricky from trailer park. Oh, I've got to see that one. It's going to be fun. He's it's it's very we got him like the hound's tooth shirt, you know. He's got a big old he's got a cigarette that's like oversized. Um he won't be going with the church kids. <laughs> but oh, he's got he we got him the mutton chop sideburns and the the a wig that looks exactly like his. So hair so it's going to be fun. I'm going as a Southwest Airlines fleece representative. Reseller. So, anyway, um, what did you what did you bring for oh, today? On, one other thing I wanted to show oh. you guys uh, on my four year old who was at school this morning. She wanted to dress with uh, as a twin with her best friend that she's in school with, so that they could, I guess, fool the teacher and <laughs> and not be able to tell them apart. And Tell I think they black girl. they That's really awesome. pulled it off. They're virtually indistinguishable. Um, you can't <laughs> tell one it. from the other. I knew it. <laughs> Little cute black girl. They look the same. Oh my gosh, that is the cutest picture ever made. Look at those glasses. Those are adorable. So the teacher this whole day is going to be like, where, which one is Sawyer and, and what, and I'm not going to say the other little girl's name, but, um, <laughs> oh my, cause God. they look so much alike and you can hear her little, her little laugh every time she thinks she's pulled one over on the teacher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's so, yeah, cool. They said they're, 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 they're twins. This is a record for us, I think. We're uh, 13, almost 14 minutes in, and we only have one person in our back door access. So the, the email isn't going through uh, for the post, so uh, I don't know what's wrong with... We set, up, we set up a text messaging, too, but I don't know if we've actually pulled that off yet, so I don't know if there's... There's, we're supposed to, there's a hug dealer list that's supposed to get text messages from us, text alerts, but I don't think we've set it up yet. Another benefit of being part of 1159plus.com. Oh. Thanks for being here, Janelle. I don't yeah. know what you want Janelle, me to do. Janelle, you are it. Do you want you me to find it. some other random people? 
off you, the nah, street. you don't have to find randoms <clears throat> if you don't want to. I mean, you, we could just post it on Facebook and see if. Don't do that. <laughs> don't don't post it on Facebook. Never mind. Don't do that. Oh. Uh, anyway, Kent. Um, Kent, what did you bring? What did you bring for us today? Well, I've got. I'll, I'll let you guys choose. <clears throat> okay. All right. I've got two things on the burner here. Uh, one is for today's Never Daily, but the second is for Friday's Creepy Pasta. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about calling an audible and let you guys choose. I could read the Creepy Pasta that I wrote, or I could go along with um what I, the story that I brought to talk about today, and then I could tell the story on Friday, uh, or what what I brought today. I could tell it on Friday, switch it up. Or we could just do what we news, usually do. I could tell the story that I brought today, and then do the creepy pasta on Friday. It's whatever you guys want to do. What if what if we flip the script this this week, and you do the creepy pasta now since it's the day before Halloween? You do the creepy pasta on on Tuesday as opposed to you know Monday. Hold on, Jess is. Let me find some people for the back door then. Okay, okay. yeah, they're going to okay. want to comment. It maybe I've heard the super on creepy creepy pasta. It's extra creepy. Maybe I'll you know what? First. And the creepy I'll go I'll go first, yeah, cuz the creepy pasta is going to be a nice uh nice bow to wrap up this episode. So Okay, in this um, relationship. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a good one. Another another Chase or uh, not Chase, uh, another Kent original. So I'm excited to to hear it. Uh, he did preview this one, which uh, tells you something. He needed to make sure that it was copacetic. <laughs> that's a that's a rare move. So you know that Kent's really uh, written something that pushes some buttons when uh, when when he asks for that kind of clearance. So anyway, here's what I brought today. Okay. Have you have you ever heard of Zozo? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I've come across a story that's as old as the dirt that we walk on, really, but made with a modern day spin. It's about a fella named Zozo. Sounds kind of like a pet name you'd give maybe your goldfish, but no, Zozo's no goldfish. This character lives in the shadows, waiting for someone to play a round of mystical monopoly on a Ouija board. And trust me. Zozo don't play fair. So let's rewind to 2009, and that's a rhyme that I did not intend to make. A guy named Darren Evans thought he'd break the monotony of his Tuesday night by chatting with some spirits. He grabs a Ouija board, gathers his pals. Hey, heaven just showed up. She did. Hey. Hi. Hey. You're hungry? Yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Let's just end this episode and we'll all go eat. She asked me if I wanted salmon patties. I'll always eat salmon patties. The answer is no. You don't like salmon patties? I I like, here's what's weird. I don't like fishy taste in fish. But I love tuna, and I also love sushi. So what's that all about? I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, back to my story, I guess. There's a like a, a, a southern staple meal is salmon patties and uh, tomatoes and macaroni and cornbread. Do you guys eat hush puppies much there? Uh, I, I love hush puppies. I could eat okay. my weight in, in pounds of hush puppies, but yeah. it's not a meal that we cook a lot. Okay, yeah, because it in Alabama and it, it was a uh, very common, especially at the um, Health South where I do service. I'd I'd go and help uh, people that had 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 strokes, and they always were feeding those people hush puppies all the time. Catfish had the stroke puppies. in the first place. <laughs> Just probably fried yeah. bread. Yeah, That's what you're giving to stroke victims? Yeah, catfish balls. What if we balls take some and carbs and deep fry them? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back Sorry, to this. So Darren yeah, Evans, he grabs a Ouija board, grabs a bunch of his pals, and they start sliding that planchette. That if you don't know what that is, it's the the little thing with the the glass 
I in the middle of it and you move it around the board and it identifies the letters or different commands. They were moving it around, sliding it around on top. At first, it kind of seemed just like all fun and games and maybe a hello from Aunt Mildred from the beyond. But then the friendly ghost act drops and Zozo makes an entrance and the planchette starts dancing the cha-cha between Z and O. Z and O. Z and O. That's when you know things are about to get spicy. How now, Zozo. Z and O on a Ouija board. Let me look this up. Zo Zozo. Oh, they're like on kinda... opposite sides of the Ouija yeah. board. Now, Zozo isn't the kind to send welcome to the neighborhood kind of cards. It, no, he's, he's more the threatening to make you on a one-way trip to a fiery inferno kind of guy. And it seems like Darren and his gang got a VIP pass to Zozo's Nightmare Fiesta. So, now what's funny is this Zozo character has been popping up in stories for centuries, like a recurring character in the world's longest-running sitcom. Back in 1816, this book called Dictionnaire Infernal tells a tale about Zozo. And then there's a theory that Zozo might just be the stage name for some ancient Mesopotamian demon named Pazuzu. Oh. Yeah. And we all know Pazuzu from the movie. The Exorcist. The Exorcist. Or right. if you're not a cinephile, Pazuzu Algarad, the, the murderer. Yeah, the one that you just covered not too long I'm ago. On. That's yeah. okay. So imagine going from Pazuzu to Zozo. Sounds kind of like a career switch, but his tale takes a detour into the science lab, actually, in 1972 with this thing called the Philip experiment. So a bunch of brainy folks wanted to see if we could trick our noodles into conjuring up spirits. And guess what? They did, or, or at least they thought that they did. They, they made up a ghost, had a chat, and even got the table to play along. So it kind of makes you wonder if Zozo is just our brains pulling a fast one on us. I'm not sure. So maybe Zozo's a demon waiting for a late night chat. Or he might just be a figment of our caffeinated, caffeinated imaginations. Jury's kind of still out on that. But uh, next time you're at a garage sale and come across a Ouija board, maybe just stick to buying the uh, camper trailer. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I'm not a like a religious person or even a spiritual person, but I won't fuck with a Ouija board. I don't like my mom was like my mom is you've met my mom. She's one of the most like, yeah, for the most part, rational people ever. She's also not, she's religious, but she's not like crazy religious or anything. Very level headed. And one thing she pounded into my brother and my's head growing up was to never touch a Ouija board because of something that happened to her when she was a kid that I don't quite know the details of. And she's like, never touch a Ouija board ever. Not like, and that's like always set with me and they've always freaked me out. I, I don't. So I don't know what I that think... says. I think I think one of the things, like, if I think of Satan and I think of, like, the one thing that he doesn't possess that we do, it's, it's a physical form, if you believe in Satan. Um, and also, uh, he doesn't technically, depending on your beliefs, but he doesn't technically have control over us unless we allow it in one form or another. And I think what your mom's maybe on to is that through the Ouija board, we're, we're, we're summoning evil, you know, whether we're welp we, welcoming it. Yeah. And I don't think that it takes that there's a rule in place that says that evil has to follow 
the law of do you know what you're doing? So (laughs) if you're an idiot and you summon evil, it has the same outcome as if you understand evil and you summon it. The outcome may be a flavor bit different because I also kind of believe that when we invite evil in, evil determines how useful we are for it. And so sometimes some jack wagon, useful, you know, bag of skin tries to get all edgy and invite evil in. And evil says, Eh, not a lot you can offer me. Can't really do anything someti- with you. Yeah, and then sometimes it's a politician. It's <laughs> exactly, and it's like, what party are you with? And then it stops. And it's like, eh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, so, but there are some cases. There's been a couple specific cases uh, where there have been what we would maybe consider credible cases of Ouija board possessions. In Bolivia, there were 35 students at a school in Santa Cruz de la Sierra. They were hospitalized in November of 2014 after they played with a Ouija board. They all exhibited symptoms such as mental agitation, confusion, profuse sweating, and trance states. And I thought, hang on. That is any kid today that spends the most of their time on TikTok. So they are just like a little bit ahead of their generation. Yeah. But that goes to show that Satan does the same thing to us as TikTok does. Uh, Here's another one. This is interesting. Between October 2006 to June 2007, which is just a handful of months, There was a significant incident that occurred at a girls-only Catholic boarding school near Mexico City. There's 4,000 students in the Catholic school. 512 were affected with symptoms such as headaches and difficulty walking, which you might go, hang on, was there a beer store and a male a male convent somewhere nearby because that could answer the headaches and difficulty walking. But what they think it was traced back to since they couldn't find a beer store or a male convent was traced back to a student who used a Ouija board. The situation was later diagnosed as what's called mass psychogenic illness, also known as mass hysteria, by Mexican psychiatrist Nashiela Loa Zavala. Oh. Yeah. And then, you know, we've had oh, a bunch baby. of like, yeah. It want to see something interesting, and there's the, the, the YouTube's full of this, are filmed exorcisms. Um, and they're, re- they're real. Well, they're, they're really filmed, they're not produced. So check that out if you ever want a rabbit hole. Go and watch on YouTube. You can find. And and they're put up by religious organizations like the Catholic, you know, the, the, some diocese will post their exorcisms. Um, I don't know if it's, it's probably not sanctioned. Uh, and maybe they say that they're a diocese, but they're not really a diocese. I don't know. But anyway, on YouTube, there's a bunch of real, real filmed exorcisms. Can't really say they're all super compelling, but... It's interesting. Yeah, um, I, I, don't, I, I definitely wouldn't mess with a Ouija board, but I don't know. At the same time, I don't know if I believe in possession. I don't think I believe in, I don't believe in possession. So I don't know where that leaves me while I'm afraid of the, like, I wouldn't leave a party if somebody busts out a Ouija board, but yeah. I would definitely stand off to the side and observe, like, no, you guys can fuck around with that thing if you want. I'm yeah. not freaked out enough to leave, but I am freaked out enough not to take part in it. But I'm also curious enough to see what happens. So, what like, was the movie that just came out a little while ago about the hand when you talk with the hand? Me, talk to me. Talk, you, did you like that one? Loved it. Thought it was great. I did too. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought the same thing. I I kind of feel like possession is probably one of those things where it's experiential, and that's what feeds your uh, belief or not, you either are in the presence of uh, a possession or you 
end up being possessed and then you know it uh and i would just be interested to know like one of the questions i'm gonna ask god if there is a god when i die and he's like you have three questions and I'll be like, well, can they be about anything? And he'll be like, yeah, now you have two questions. And I'll be like, fuck. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll be like, what percentage of exorcisms performed in history was just a schizophrenic person? That yeah. <laughs> was right. having an episode. Yeah. There. The the other thing the other thing that nobody seems to ask a question about is like <clears throat> does it take authority to to cast out a a demon like I mean I don't does think the you devil can, just like, respond to any human that's like get no, out of here you've got to be like it couldn't be like the guy that valeted your car yeah it's got to be someone that's been that's re- maybe received the authority to be able to yeah, and I also feel like i don't know why but i feel like you have to have good credit <laughs> or like or, I, I just or, don't think that somebody with like a 411 credit score could ex could exercise a demon yeah i almost feel like credit might not be a factor i feel like you need to be a 501c3 nonprofit in order to uh cast out demons i don't think you could be for profit I'm not saying I agree with it. The system's fucked. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about a messed up system, it's come on. We should really open up the. I think now, anybody I think should be able be... to exercise demons. I think there's, I think that's one of those things where it's like, not just everybody can marry people, you know? And, yeah. uh, and so I, I, f- I feel like there's an authority thing there that. Would you want a guy with a bad important. credit score marrying you and your wife? Like, I feel like that's no. just getting life off on the bad, on the wrong foot, right? I'd feel like if somebody with a bad credit score was marrying me that I'm just feeding his lack of um, lack of financial management skills. I'm paying him. Yeah. It's also weird that you check the credit score of the guy that was marrying you. I know. But I also check all the funeral potatoes for poison. But like old uh, like old kings used to do. If you use the same guy that you use for exorcisms to marry, you don't have to worry about checking their credit score. Yeah, I think it comes with an automatic uh, quick release in the marriage if you use that person. It's like, yeah, just the one more thing. So there's there's a girl named Annalise Michelle. Oh yeah, she was a yeah. You've heard of her German woman. She was believed to be possessed, led to an exorcism, which unfortunately, again, like tactics. For an exorcism, it resulted in her death in 1976. So she began ex- experiencing severe psychiatric symptoms at age 16, and her condition worsened over time. They believed uh, some believed to be demonic possession, and then the events surrounding her life inspired the film *The Exorcism of Emily Rose*. Uh, you know, and it's one of those really, it's, a, um, uh, it, it crossed so many chasms from religious debates to medical debates to legal debates, because I don't know if you, if you read up on Annalise Michelle, they were like, someone needs to go to Home Depot. I mean, there was, there was a lot that was done and it was, I, 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 I don't, I don't understand how somebody could be that abusive in the process of, in the name of, tr- <laughs> trying to get rid of someone, it's de- de- demon, demon. It's rough, and that's like the case though with like most exorcisms. I feel like if you look at it through the lens of like science, it's like, oh, this isn't a demon. This is this guy was in a car wreck a week ago. And now he's got blood on his brain and he's dying. Yeah. Right. And he doesn't know what's going on. It's probably not a demon. It's probably the, I bet it was the car wreck. That- I think that's the fun thing though. Like it's kind of the giggle in a way. Like if you believe in God, I think the giggle there is when people are like, oh, well, every, you know, science can, can answer anything that you say was God. And and I'm like, yeah, that's the point. God's a scientist. God's not a magician. Like I'll bet you money someday 
we're going to be able to go, so how'd you do the Red Sea thing? You know, part in the Red Sea thing. You know, he'll be like, oh, it was, it was this, you know was this and we're like oh and none of his answers are ever going to be oh that was just magic (laughs) that was magic you can't you just can't you can't do that it was magic oh okay i don't think i don't think he's a magician i think he's just a you know we're all gods compared to 1700 science i mean geez we have a phone that i can ask a question to and it gives me the answers from all of human existence and that just happened in January. So. <laughs> and I bet God has a 750 FACO. I'll bet. He doesn't have an 800 because the it's it's rigged. It's rigged. You can't. No, you, you can. You can. I think my wife has an 800. Or something like that. Oh, but that's for Not another fair, show. Not fair because he paid off all our sins. <laughs> That's how he got the score. Was he just <laughs> looks like she has a menu in her hands. Heaven's like, all right, so let me get this straight. You wanted the double dose of the catfish claw. <clears throat> so you're ready for she's needing to use my her phone has been funky and weird. Oh. Um, so she's using <clears throat> your potato? Yes. Ha. All right, yeah, bring bring it. Bring the heat with your creepy pasta. Today. It's creepy pasta f- Monday. I guess. Creepypasta Monday for Tuesday. And the creepypasta that I've written today is titled Hot Air Balloons. <laughs> I'm just going to open up air. the chat on the back door access while this plays out. I'm just excited to, to watch this. <laughs> and oh, this is a completely gosh. original work of fiction by myself. Um, it's not piggybacking off anything else. <laughs> it's not based in any kind of reality or anything of the sort. It's called hot air balloons. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and if, it, if we're true to form, Jess may end up actually in anaphylaxis during or sometime during the story. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Hot air balloons. <clears throat> Very creepy. It's a very creepy pasta. Very spooky for Halloween. Uh Uh-huh. Here we go. Action. Zach and Bill. (laughs) I don't understand what you're laughing about. I don't either. Zach and Bill had gotten into the hot air balloon business together back in 1988. The two had experienced good times, and they had experienced bad times. Moments of monetary success, and moments where neither could afford a beer, be it a real one or a root beer. The business ran smooth for the first few years. The amount of returning customers steadily climbed, and with increased profits came new opportunities. In 1992, the two businessmen discovered another man by the name of Trent running his own <laughs> small, small hot air business. Okay. <laughs> Trent had no customers, no money. Hell, he didn't even have a hot air balloon. He was just blowing up giant party balloons out in the middle of a field and then attaching little baskets to them made from hay and charging children that came by to watch him fly dead grasshoppers up and out of sight. In this guy, Zach and Bill saw potential. He would perfect he would be perfect for their thriving hot air balloon business, they thought. When Trent got there, it was amazing. These were real hot air balloons that could take up real people. No more dead grasshoppers for me. Trent thought. <sighs> Now, before we start talking about the nitty gritty of things around here, you got to watch the employee training tape first, Zach said. Bill nodded and then added, it's going to clear a lot of confusion in the beginning. (laughs) Bill has an accent, okay. (laughs) Uh, 
The two men pointed towards a small shed that sat out behind the old hot air balloon store that they also ran, which sold regular hot air balloons as well as specially designed hot air balloons for various animals. Cats, dogs. They even had a hot air balloon attached to a fish tank so that salamanders and fish could go up in the sky. Trent, Zach, and Bill made their way to the shed, which wasn't much bigger than an old outhouse and looked like one too. The new employee pulled that creaky old wooden door open and then shot a glance back to Bill and Zach. Go on in, they said in unison. The video will start soon. <laughs> <laughs> The giggle. <laughs> Trent stepped inside, and it took his eyes a moment to adjust to the lack of sunlight in this dusty old shack. Small slivers of light broke into the shack from the gaps in the wooden planks, and Trent could see dust and particles dancing in the beams. To his right, there was a faded poster nailed to the wall. It had clearly been there for years, and he squinted his eyes and finally realized that it was an old Eminem Marshall Mathers LP poster. <laughs> Underneath it sat a small table. Strewn about it was religious literature and brochures from a religion that Trent had heard about but was not familiar with. <laughs> Trent went to take a step forwards to the table but kicked something noisy on Look Down. Strung across the floor of the shack was empty beer cans and cigarette butts and instruction manuals from various forms of obsolete technology. <laughs> Printers, computers, TVs, there have been over there had to have been over a hundred manuals scattered amongst the beer cans. In the center of the room sat a single fold-out style steel chair. In front of that chair was a small end table with an old box style television on it. Trent took a seat, and when he looked forward, he realized something. The TV didn't have a screen or a back panel on it. You could see straight through it. Furthermore, the back wall of the shack that would have been visible through the television had also been cut out in a section of about three foot by three foot. Trent could see right out into the field behind the shack through the television. Just as every muscle in his body began to tense up, telling him to get up and run, a voice came in through one of the slits between the boards. It was Bill. We're running a bit late. Give us just a minute, <laughs> he said. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trent tried to relax. He sat there in silence. It felt like forever. This... Whatever it was, was definitely running late. <laughs> Finally, after 30 minutes or so, Zach stepped into view through the hole in the <sighs> shack. He must have been standing 20 or so feet away because his entire body was in view. Zach was holding a gun at his side, staring off to the left at something that Trent couldn't see. And that's when Bill stepped into view from the other side, also holding a gun. Bill walked up to Zach, stopped, and the two stood, staring eye to eye for a moment, no more than two foot apart. Trent watched as, almost in sync, the two men raised their pistols to each other's heads. He began to look away. <laughs> he didn't sign up for this. He hadn't signed up to watch these two men kill each other. He was having a good time sending dead grasshoppers into space. What the fuck is going on, Trent wondered, as he pulled a lukewarm burrito out of his pocket and began eating it. Burritos always made Trent feel better. Stress eating will be the death of you, his wife often told him on more than one occasion. Surely not, he thought as he took a bite. I'm in decent shape for a 32-year-old man. There's no way this will catch up to me later. As he chewed, he leaned in closer to the television. Zack and Bill were still standing there, guns pointed at each other's heads. And then something happened. Both lowered their weapons and continued staring into each other's eyes for a moment before Bill reached up and wrapped his hand around the back of Zack's head. <sighs> yes. He pulled Zack in close to him and the two men locked lips. 
while they stood there in the field tasting each other's hot saliva. Zack began Oof. working his hands down to Bill's zipper. Meanwhile, Bill's hands were finding the buttons on Zack's flannel coat. <laughs> Within seconds, both pistols were laying in the grass of the field at the men's feet. A few feet away laid a flannel coat and a beanie. <laughs> The members of both men were now excited and engorged and wanting to get out into the fresh air to play a bit. <sighs> Bill stopped kissing Zack for a moment and glanced down. Zack's erection pushed at the front of his jeans. <laughs> Bill giggled like an anime girl and whispered, <laughs> I can help you with that. <laughs> <sighs> Zack looked down at Bill's member and laughed a bit himself. I think I can take care of that as well. (laughs) Trent watched as the two men 69'd out there on their bare backs in the field. (laughs) It was a confusing mishmash of holes and sweaty flesh and body hair and penis. At certain angles, it almost looked like The Thing from the popular movie The Thing. (laughs) After about five minutes, they had each managed to work their penis into the anus of the other simultaneously (sighs) in a move that Trent had never seen, but one that reminded him of a double version of the figure four leg lock made famous by the nature boy Ric Flair. Eventually, both men ejaculated in a joint climax while slamming their gooches together. In their bliss, both men began howling like wolves. (laughs) Did they? Did they now? Trent just watched in disbelief while gripping that burrito. In awe, in shock, in horror. After filling each other up real good, they both stood up, picked up their guns, and walked butt naked to the hole in the wall and then leaned in. Both were breathing happily and smiling. Bits of grass and dead bugs had stuck to their sweaty foreheads. Trent sat there, frozen, as the two men stared at him with grins on their face and guns in their hands. So what do you think? Would you like to work here? (laughs) Bill and Zach said in unison. I, uh, I... Trent raised the burrito and took a small bite and then rolled a bean around in his mouth with his tongue while staring down at the floor. (laughs) You want a cup for that burrito? Bill asked. (laughs) This question jolted Trent back to reality. What? I, uh, no, I'm good. Thanks, though. (sighs) The three men just existed there in silence for a moment before Trent spoke up again. I guess I could work here, he said, more out of fear than anything. Fantastic, Bill said. Zach followed it up with, you're going to be a great fit for the show. You can even help us with our new hire next week. Her name is Lacey. Just stop it. Uh, it's an original original work. Not uh, piggybacking off the writing of anyone else. And and that was hot air balloon business, I think is what I called it. <laughs> well, hot air balloons. Do you, hot air balloons. Do you have an author? Is, who, what's the pen, Albert the Smells. pen name? Al- Albert Smells. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Wow. I feel like I, I, super spooky. It's a, it's a tale as old as time, I feel. <laughs> Did you like it? I loved it. Well, thanks, Bill. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I don't have anything else to add except for if you enjoy this podcast, check out Dark Topic. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, Bye. man. Hugs, everybody. <laughs>